The new trigger syntax added in Zabbix 5.4 truly unlocked the power of problem detection with Zabbix, especially for niche use cases and complex logic. So let's take a deep dive into the new trigger syntax together with a support engineer from Zabbix. Let's welcome Sergey Simonenko. Hello everyone. My name is Sergey. I'm technical support engineer of Zabbix. Today I'm going to talk about how we changed trigger and calculated item syntax and about new possibilities which come with these changes. So first, let me talk about the syntax. So uh, I think it was one of major uh, things on the roadmap to Zabbix 6, because we wanted to remove many limitations, make everything simpler and more unified. So now uh, calculated items and triggers share one syntax. So in this example, you can see uh, the same formula being used both for calculated item and adding some condition for trigger. Important to say that uh, all functions, most, most of them can be used both in calculated items and triggers. And if there is some new function delivered in next releases of Zabbix, it's most likely that you can use it in both calculated items and triggers. And you shouldn't worry about new syntax. Uh, you should not rewrite all your expressions when you upgrade to Zabbix 6. All of that conversion will, be, will carry it upon automatically. So um, one more important thing, it's no longer necessary to pass host and item reference to every function. So uh, now only history and prediction function require them, always as first parameter. Uh, but for functions like, for example, date and time functions like date, time, now, you don't have to pass that unnecessary host and item reference to them. That makes uh, reading expressions much simpler and uh, they look more logical. Uh, please note that if you write a trigger expression or calculated item, at least uh, in one function, you have to reference host and item. Next, very important thing uh, about simplifying and standardizing uh, parameters for functions is uh, that we uh, combined time and time sheet parameters in one parameter. So, um, for example, you can see here some examples of relative time shifts and absolute time shifts. So, for absolute time shifts, you use slash character and specify what you want to use, day, week, month. So those absolute expressions will give you, uh, in case of day, uh, the period of midnight to midnight, in case of week from Monday to Sunday, and so on. Uh, next, very important thing, it's now possible to write nested uh, expressions. So, uh, Basically, we allowed to use uh, the return values of other functions as parameters of another function. So that allows for a lot of flexibility. So for example, in the past, we had function apps change, which uh, basically performed the same functionality that change does, but was making an absolute value. Uh, but uh, now you can use uh, apps function instead of that and apply it either to change or last or any other function that's uh, expected to return some signed uh, negative value. Also, we removed uh, strlin function and now you can apply the length function to any other function, like for example, some history function that returns string values. Also, you can see in this example, it's now possible to build expressions like this. So we, for example, can compare latest values of two items and find uh, the minimum of them. Uh, trigger functions have been also organized in groups and uh, you can notice that in either front end or our documentation. So now we have history functions, aggregate functions, which allow you to find some maximum values, minimum values, sum them, average values, and so on. Also, uh, we have a new uh, kind of functions, operator functions, and they uh, really enable you to write compact and better readable expressions. We have mathematical functions, we have string functions, and date and time functions. 
So here you can see the screenshot of the trigger creation wizard, where you can now not surf through a very long alphabetical uh, list of all functions, but you can find the uh, group you're interested in and then find necessary function that allows for easier navigation, easier learning, and so on. So um, we have also introduced a lot of new string and mathematical functions. So uh, here you can see, first of all, string functions. So now it's possible to iterate strings, like to uh, find characters or single character at given position, like index. It's also possible to perform some string manipulations, to possible to insert characters, replace them, concatenate two strings, uh, trim some character, left trim, right trim. Also possible to uh, get ASCII of uh, some character at certain position and to find a bit length and byte length of string. And also you can see there is plenty of new mathematical functions like cosinus, sinus, uh, square root. Uh, they're much, pretty much uh, self-explanatory and there is very many more of them. Next thing, operator functions. They allow you to write shorter and better human readable expressions. So we introduced two, two operator functions between and in, and you can, can compare the old syntax you had to define such uh, logics. So in case uh, you wanted to compare a value to like, let's say 10 values, you had to write a very long expression. You can see it takes two lines here. Now it's very short, very compact and easy to modify and read. Next up, uh, new history and aggregate functions. Uh, they're very much similar in that they allow you to short, shortly define some uh, expressions, some thresholds uh, without writing long, long expressions comparing last values and so on. So first of all, we introduce functions mono inc, mono deck. They allow you to detect monotonic increase or decrease in set of historical values. So that can allow you to detect some uh, Anomalies like, for example, uh, increasingly uh, depleting disk space or growing a queue of some message broker, something like that. You can detect it as soon as possible. Also, it's possible to uh, count changes between adjacent values. So you can uh, detect either all changes or on the increases in decreases. Uh, and the most um, uh, useful use case for this one is, for example, to count uh, how many times your server has been rebooted uh, according to system uptime value. Also, this is a very separate topic. I won't concentrate a lot on this, uh, but we introduced uh, new functions to easily work with Prometheus data format. So you can use them uh, in order to uh, analyze uh, the data which is emitted by Prometheus compatible emitters. Also some minor things, but also very important. We removed a lot of shortcut functions for easier navigation and to avoid confusion. That doesn't make uh, trigger expressions longer, uh, but that removes a lot of confusion, removes a lot of redundant code. Uh, so for example, instead of a Delta function, you can now just uh, subtract maximum from minimum. Uh, instead of div function, you can just compare latest value and previous value. And instead of previous, you can just uh, select latest uh, second value. Uh, next very important thing, it's more about removing the limitations we had before. Uh, and how we modified our aggregate calculations. So in the past, aggregate calculations were a separate uh, type of item. Uh, and it was not so handy because uh, it was very confusing because calculated items and aggregate checks, despite they perform very similar functionalities, they were configured absolutely differently. So for example, uh, for uh, calculated items, you could use arbitrary item key and you defined the logics within formula. And for um, aggregate checks, uh, the formula was uh, defined within item key. It has had strict syntax. 
So uh, we solved this by uh, making aggregate checks part of calculated items. So now it's all in the formula field. Uh, and uh, also about removing limitations. All syntax only allowed to perform aggregate calculations based on one host group and exact item key. And to address this issue, we introduced complex filters and wildcards. So about filters. Uh, now you can use not only host group, but you can use multiple host groups. Uh, you can use text and you can use complex and or logical operations with, it, with multiple clauses. So for example, in this case, in order to calculate uh, average CPU load on certain set of servers, uh, here you can see the syntax, I highlighted that. Uh, so you see that question mark, you can think of it as a where statement in SQL query. And then you have your clauses. So it's possible to use AND and OR operators here. And it's also possible to uh, logically group operands. So in this case, uh, you want to uh, have uh, aggregation on servers from group servers A servers from group servers B. And, and for example, you have some group of servers which is not very critical, but there are some critical servers anyway, and they are marked with a uh, tag importance high. So now it's very easy to write such expressions uh, and you can just think of it as, as any logical expression in any programming language. Next very important thing. Uh, let's say you heavily use low level discovery for example, of network interfaces, being it uh, network interface cards of server or some uh, network interfaces of some router or switch. Uh, in case you add additional uh, interface or additional uh, line card and your LLD discovers those. Uh, in the past, if you wanted to perform calculations over multiple different item keys, you had to use um, strict uh, formula in calculated items. Uh, and every time new interfaces being discovered, you had to adjust that formula and it was very easy to forget about it. And in that case, you would not have uh, precise data as a result. So now it's possible to reference multiple item keys using a wildcard character. So in this case, uh, you can uh, find all of the interfaces of uh, customer A, from multiple hosts and reference all uh, interfaces, for example, ETH1, ETH0, ETH2 with wildcard character. That's it. Thank you very much. All of the questions are welcome. Thank you a lot. It's been really great. And I think everyone can follow this presentation if they wish to learn and use these new trigger functions in the new syntax. Thank you.